there's a tree here at Jake's house. Right back there, that's a lime tree. And he wants to take that lime tree from there and move it right over there. <laughs> so we're gonna take you guys along with us today and see if we can get this lime tree from its permanent home to its new permanent home. It is Saturday, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, and Jake had talked to me actually last year. Jake and Shay had asked me about this lime tree. They were a little concerned that it was too close to the wall here, and then because they're, they're hitting it with the cars and concerned about the roots going down underneath their block wall. You can see that there. And as I was talking to them, I said, well, you know, another thing to think about too with the placement, and citrus trees here in Arizona need full blazing sun. You guys know that. We talk about it all the time. So what we're going to do, you can see we've got a pretty good sized tree. It's a couple years old. Um, the trunk of the tree, I would say, is probably a good five to six inches in diameter. So it's a pretty solid tree. It produced really, really well. We've had a few of the limes that they shared with us. So we're going to be pulling that up. Now, where it's going? It's going to be going right over here. So you can see it's right on the corner of their property line here, right across from us. So we're right over there. And we're going to move it over here. So we're going to be heading, oh, 40 feet or so with this big tree into this hole that he's already got dug out. So now you can see how this is looking. The soil, it's our typical Arizona hard clay type soil. But you can see right there, we're using our old trick of wood chips on the ground to soften up the soil. So he's dug a very, very large hole. So we're not going to have an issue there. And we're going to be obviously doing the normal stuff that we typically would with wood chips and irrigation rings and all that kind of stuff. Now, a couple of the challenges that we have uh, with this is the tree is up against a block wall, so I can't just go yanking it out. Um, obviously, I need to cut it back, so we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but first things first, we're going to have to try to figure out whether or not we can use the tractor to lift this thing up. Because if we can, I can save more of those roots and have a better chance of this tree surviving. First thing we need to do is we need to make sure and get this tree cut back. So we know we're gonna be cutting into roots. This tree is a good seven to eight feet wide and it's probably about eight feet tall or so. So I know the roots are definitely underneath the fence, coming out this way, underneath the driveway. And we're gonna be cutting those roots back pretty extensively. Because of that, and we're taking the kind of the feet out from underneath the tree, we also need to make sure that we're doing the exact same thing above the ground. So where we're going to be pruning essentially below the ground, we need to do the same amount or equivalent amount of pruning above ground. So one of the things that uh, reasons I put Jake off until winter time is he got his last harvest off the tree here the last couple weeks. And we're in a period where it has not started to flower yet. And so it's not necessarily dormant, but it's also not growing very aggressively, which is the best we can do with citrus trees here in Arizona. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this thing pruned back, give you an idea of what this thing is gonna look like once we've uh, done a hack job on it. Definitely don't want to go any deeper than you're at on that side. Okay, gotcha. Trying to find well, the crown. Mean? All right, so I definitely have the crown here. Oh, there's a big root. Yep. Right there, so we want to, so we want to, we want to keep dirt on the ground. Yeah, like down in. So we don't want to go any deeper than that. I'm gonna have Lori slide in because we talk a lot about um, the root crown and how deep you want to plant your tree. So now Jake, he already knew when he planted this a couple years ago that he needed to make sure that the crown. The root crown or root flare, however you want to call it. Um, he knew that that couldn't be very deep. He didn't want to plant it too deep. So that's what he did. He basically planted it at ground level. And you can see ground level is right about here where my hand is. We had to dig down, what is that, about four inches or so, maybe five inches, and finally hit the crown right here. So you can see the key right there is he had the right idea. The problem is the nursery didn't. So the nursery already had this planted too deep and then the tree continued to just fill in with soil and that kind of thing. And now you wind up four or five inches too deep. And obviously we don't want to transplant it and make the same mistake. So one of those things where you're kind of covering the sins of the father, so to speak, when you transplant a tree, you can go ahead and make things right, which is what we're going to do. Of course, the challenge means we got to dig that much further down in order <laughs> to get the roots cut.
couple things that uh, we learned pretty quick. Number one, this is the biggest tree that I've transplanted, oldest tree that I've transplanted, and we didn't get a root ball. I really like to get some type of soil around the roots before we get it into the ground, just so there's less shock. However, this has a major amount of shock as Lori slides in. As we were trying to get this tree up, we realized pretty quick, because it was planted a little bit too deep, or actually grew deep, we had an extra four or five inches we weren't anticipating, so trying to get underneath the tree was really, really hard. Even with the uh, Bosch Bulldog that he was using, it was really hard to get underneath here. Um, so as we're trying to get underneath and get further down under the tree to break all those roots loose, we were having a hard time with it. So I think we got some footage. You'll see me trying to pull the tree up and we used a toe strap and that was a mistake because it's gonna be hard to pick up on camera. We wanted to get paint on it quick, but about probably a good half or so of the tree stripped the bark right off of there, which is really, really bad. You definitely don't wanna do that. So hindsight 2020, uh, would not do that where we were trying to lift the tree up. It didn't do us any good. Um, so we wound up coming in closer, getting more of the root ball off or more of the dirt off of the root ball. And uh, unfortunately we got it stripped. Now it didn't go all the way around, so it didn't girdle it completely, um, but it took off a pretty fair amount. Also because we couldn't get down quite as deep as I was wanting to, we had to bring the tree down a little bit more. So it looks a little funny now, but at this point, we're keeping our fingers crossed with some mulch and some vitamin B1 and some TLC, we're gonna be all right. They're gonna be hand watering this tree so we don't have irrigation running to it, but you'll see that we did the standard donut kind of ring that you'll see us doing in all of the trees. So it has an inner ring that we're gonna be watering in to begin with. We'll mulch this nice and heavy so it'll keep that soil moisture in. We'll also fill the ring here with some fertilizer. Even though it's way early, we wanna get some fertility in the ground here. We're gonna be using fish emulsion, vitamin B1 in the ring. We're gonna do some Fertizona fertilizer out in the outside ring. And Jake's gonna water the inner ring for the first six months to a year along with the outer ring. And then I'll remind them next year, we'll switch to the outer ring only. Now, of course, we need to get uh, wood chips in here and we're definitely gonna need to stake this tree. So you can see it's gonna, it has a lot of movement. We had to bring the root flare. You can see that here or crown. You can see it's right here. You can't see ground level because of the rings, but it's just above ground level, uh, which means there it's very, very top heavy. So we need to make sure that we stake it on both sides. We're gonna finish doing that. And then I think we're gonna wrap it for today. This is a little bit different today. So it's great to have Jake here and getting this tree up. Actually, it turns out it was in the ground for five years. I didn't know that till just now. So that challenge of getting this out of the ground was legit. We're right across the street. So we'll be able to keep an eye on this tree. Definitely looking forward to seeing how this tree does as we go through the years. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Any questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. You know the Amazon shop, free painless way to help support the channel. If you start there, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help us support us here. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne is your man, listen to him. He knows what he's doing. Look at the tree behind you, it looks so happy. And Much need, better than its other <laughs> home it was before. And if you need electrical work, he's your guy. <laughs> it's not that me. That too. <laughs>